Hey there, so exciting news today. I made you a thing slash I could use your help. It's a situation of kind of an early access thing. And for context here, it works on tablet, it works on phone. Uh, it also works on your laptop, desktop, Windows, Mac, probably Linux, probably Chromebook. I think, haven't checked those in a while. But what it is, it's about learning to read code. And it's currently, like I say, in early access. It is available. You'll be able to play it through the information in this description in this video. Uh, I'll do a little demonstration today of what it involves, but a bit of backstory on what this is about. Uh, this is for learning fundamentals of reading code, specifically to read code. And I stress that it's that because it's not about writing code and it's not about building things, right? Most of my teaching, which is typically oriented towards adults, people who are at least high school, in many cases, grown people are in college. Uh, those are cases where, you know, we're building stuff, we're building long-term projects, we're making things. And part of the things that I've run into is when I have younger clients, which I've got a few people I work with who are 10, 12 for a school year, I work with people four to 10. Uh, those are cases where obviously... Sometimes it's useful to go even more fundamental than that. And so what this program is all about, it's an educational game to help you practice the basics of how to read code, how to understand the process without blurring the lines between how to do stuff with it. I actually found that when we tried to apply it sometimes at the very fundamental level, we'd trip over thinking too literally about objects, about space, about how physical things work, about how sound works. And so this is completely abstracted. Years ago, I was working with some many more youth people, I think about ages four to 10 for a school year. A few reference photos here, just as examples of them testing this early version of this application. Uh, and of course, you know, no faces on it. Privacy is important. Uh, but it's a case where basically we found it was working really well, even for people who are maybe five, six, seven, ten, 10 uh, at varying levels of proficiency in doing this. And it was nice because it was laying a foundation for really doing things with code. But even though it worked for youth players, it's also something that I ran into as a grad school educator that it doesn't matter, like I said the other day in the video, right? It doesn't matter whether someone is eight or 58. It's something where if you haven't learned it, if you haven't been told it, if you haven't encountered something like it before, it's equally foreign to you. No one's explained it to you. How would you possibly know that? And so the hope here is that this can build a better bridge towards more of the educational resources out there, right? The same people who maybe have even tried my codeyourfirstgame.com course on Udemy or otherwise, and then kind of bounced off it or tried some other video resource on YouTube that they found elsewhere, written tutorials, and just kind of hard time getting lost in it, couldn't really picture what's going on. The hope is that this will help bridge that gap for people. And so it's a completely free game. Uh, but like I say, I could use your help because it is still in early access. What I mean by that is that it is not publicly available. It is obviously is a public video. So you found it. Congratulations. But except for getting through the link, I'm going to give you through the URL here of learn to read uh, That actually has a password built into it for the tester user base here on itch before it's public. So you're getting access to this before anybody else. Obviously, welcome to share this again. This is video is public, uh, but built into there. So let me do a quick demonstration here. We've got uh, that this can run on a tablet or on phone. You can pick your jewelry store or secret mansion. And like it emphasized up here, this is just a visual difference. This is just a style choice of which you prefer in terms of environment. You'll kick it off. It has a little introductory video sequence that I rendered using Blender. Pleased with that. Uh, and then within the game, what you're doing is you're cracking safes. And each safe has a set of dials on it. And you can immediately see this the type of puzzles it's showing where you can pick your starting level between one and 100 and what format. So but I mean by format, right? So we can use words. So set A to red. We can use symbols, which use emojis to make a more symbolic link. Or programming syntax, where it's showing your equal signs, inferring directionality, uh, semicolons and so on. And then as you progress up through levels you're setting, it starts to have where you're changing them, you're subtracting, you're adding to them, you're setting one based on the other. You have if conditional branching for if this is equal to that, do this part or don't. It has if else's, it has uh, logical ands. It builds up to calling functions of secondary code. And by the end of it, you're getting some pretty sophisticated stuff where to crack a safe, you're looking at something that really is not all that different than what you see in JavaScript and C++ and C Sharp uh, as you warm up to it. But to go way back to the beginning and just kind of show how it works, I click on play game. There's animations built in throughout. So every 10 stages, you get kind of a clue about how to either engage with the game or about a fundamental of understanding the type of instruction that it's teaching. And so it's showing there's three different ways to interact with these blocks. And it turns out some of these are easier if you're on a touch screen, some work better with the mouse, some work better if you're just trying to make sense out of what the instruction means. And so we set A to yellow. I can click on yellow and it'll turn the knob to yellow. Set A to blue. I could drag blue, just like I'm rotating the knob and let go of it. Again, that's especially works well on a touch screen. C is already red. I can leave it there. Um, but I could also click C to its right or left color. And then it'll change to the color on the left, the color on the right, respectively, in case that's a little less sloppy. And once I have these colors, right, A is yellow, B is blue, C is red. I click on open. Ta-da! I get an emoji. 
uh, gift. And so all the different prizes in the game, there's hundreds of them are based on emojis. Since I forgot that younger players often like emojis. AD yellow, beta red, CD yellow, open. And you get the gist for kind of these early puzzles. Now, part of what also goes on is that if I skip ahead a little, left and right color, play game. And this shows you kind of, again, an explanation of kind of what's going on as you're wading into it. Uh, there's also a practice guide. So this is something, this was important because when I worked with the classroom of kids, I was there able to answer questions for them about why this works that way, about why their answer didn't work. I could show them that if they did the steps correctly, it would solve it. I built myself into the practice guide. So, okay, so when I turn that on, it shows me this is the current step, set B to red. If I do something else, if I try to set A to yellow, it will back me up and say, nope, try again. If I'm not sure what this means, I can click on explain how to do it. It says change B to red. It already is. Click next step to skip. I've got a next step here, or you know, you could also you could wiggle it, you can tap the red. I'll click on next step. C to yellow. Same thing. If I set say to blue, it pushes me back and says no. I can go to C to yellow, A to blue, set A to C's color, right? And obviously I've written this like programming syntax, so the values always flow from the right into the variable on the left. But C's color is yellow. A to C, let's say I get that wrong. Right? I try to set instead C to A. I set it to blue. When I let go of it up here, it'll again reject it. I can get, okay, explain what to do. Change A to C's color. C's color is yellow, so set A to yellow. Aha, I can proceed. A to its left color, B to its right color, open. And we didn't get a trophy there because we used the help feature. But that same help feature, of course, is built in for the more advanced features. So as we skip up in levels and we start getting multiple functions uh, with parameters and inequalities and stuff. Let me also then shift this into more code style syntax. And this you'll see here where it's explaining with animations, right? Use the side plan for X for yellow. It shows how the yellow becomes the variable X inside of the functions that we're working on here. A to blue. Let me turn on the practice guide so you know that works. So A to blue, B to blue, and you'll see all the styling changes when we're in different versions. Now these, okay, there's a function over called now these A minus minus. This is again where these are these are handy, right? If you weren't quite sure, it is minus minus. What does it imply turning it? This makes sure you can't have any confusion there. C to A, and again, we've learned from trying the other formats playing this game that it always flows to the left. A minus minus. Now over here, there's a function called over here where Z is going to be blue. And so you see Z, just like we saw in the animation, blue to Z. Blue goes on to C, which we can double check. Change C to Z. Z is blue, so set C to blue. It already is. Click next step. Next, A minus minus. B to yellow. And again, when it's already yellow, you can wiggle it, you can tap it, you can click on next, any one of those will work. Run. And again, we use the cheat so we didn't get the result. But that's what I want to share today. Safe Code Trainer. It's free at learntoreadcode.com. Again, right now, it's actually using a testing password to get through it. I'll also say built into there, right? You've got several different songs, all kind of Creative Commons, public domain, license type things. Uh, the trophy case will show you which puzzles you've solved. So see here, these gifts mean that I haven't solved it yet. You can see that I solved in word mode level 50 once. I've done that level once and got this uh, racket. And this is nice for, you know, if you're playing with a younger sibling or a friend or someone just newer to code and they're not quite sure, they didn't see what the emoji was, they want to go back and check, they can see, okay, I was in programming mode at level 100, I got this little chicken. And even though the puzzle stopped getting more complicated at 100, they just store up to 130 for fun. In case you want to do more random puzzles for practice. But I forget, it's also kind of a nice way, right, for if you want to test, like I say, with a friend, with a younger family member, with a student, with a classroom, and you won't be able to show the teacher or show their parent or show someone else like, hey, look, I, you know, I did the first 10 today or I, I did them in symbol mode and have some pride in that. They can, you can see what practice they've been doing. Easy to reset here. I've also got a cheat mode, which it's going to be pretty obvious if someone cheated because it fills these in where it basically just shows all the emojis, which is really helpful for me as a testing stage. So I can tell like, oh, shoot, Chris, uh, actually symbol for 94, number 281 doesn't show up on my iPad. Microsoft Surface, Chromebook, Windows, Mac, Linux, you name it, symbols or emojis. And so these aren't cooked in graphics, right? These are actually the live emoji characters. Some of these may not show. That's part of what that's for. Um, but you can tell if someone cheats because obviously they didn't uh, actually beat these levels sequentially 310 times, 311 times, 312 times. That just makes it easier for me to test. Uh, speaking of testing, and again, you will help me out so much if you do this, right? If you try it out and you go to provide feedback, that's going to open a Google form with some real basic just context about Who's testing? Because it helps me understand, right? Is this someone who is six years old, 10 years old? Uh, and Mitch is on the right. Obviously, this is not meant to be filled in by someone younger than 18. I don't want to collect youth information. This is more for if you're a parent, a teacher, a facilitator, a programmer, helping out a non-programming person kind of just navigate this to share your thoughts and feedback on like, this was helpful. We got confused about this. Uh, we ran into this problem. 
that's very, very helpful to me. So if you can do that, that's really what you can do to help me out today. Help me help more people through this free game at learntoreadcode.com. Try it out, play some levels, show it to somebody else. Try doing it in symbol mode in different stages. Uh, explore it, you know, and then click on the help and feedback and then provide feedback. Follow the green buttons, help me out there. You also find, of course, the credits there, which I'm, I'm the only like developer, but I did use some. Um, I've ob- obtained assets uh, from Turbo Squid, et cetera, which not my usual style, but worked well for this particular kind of project. How to play. I haven't really built in great instructions yet. That's part of what I'm trying to work on here for the next stage before it's more public. Again, public video, but it is this URL. Learn to read code.com will get you there. Part of why it's not more public yet is I don't have better instructions. Right? I like to build some videos that show and tell and explain and teach how to do this a little more actively and engaged. So there's some high level notes here to maybe clear things up a little bit. Uh, but right now, the main explanations you have in there is when you're playing, uh, you know, you get these illustrations every 10. So at the start of each new section, kind of showing the gist of how these bits work. Sometimes they're animated. You've got the turn on practice guide and the explain what to do for the step part. So if you have questions about why is this the next thing to do? Is that it? Um, and I will say these are all randomly generated, right? So if you tell me in the feedback that like, hey, level 65, I got stuck on whatever. I can't see your level 65. It's different every time everybody opens level 65. Also, because they're randomly generated, there is a chance that there may be a situation still, despite the fact I've done what I can to not make that a problem, it might have an invalid solution. It's not out of the question. The odds are low. I will say that I have tested this pretty thoroughly, and that is a reasonably good chance that if you are finding it's not working, first try the practice mode. Have explained for the step. Verify that that's not working. If you want to screen grab it and let me know that somehow, I can try to give it a look. But again, there's 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 a possibility of a corrupt solution. I'm still trying to really bring that down to like zero before this is more public too because heaven forbid it, I don't want some kid trying to learn how to do this and then they start learning the wrong idea or something. It seems unfair. So that's super important, but these are randomly generated. So I do want to note that it's impossible for me to so far test every possible variation. And there's some tricky, complex things happening under the hood to make all this stuff possible. So that's the gist. This is Safe Code Trainer uh, by me at learntoreadcode.com. You can access it right now on your tablet or smartphone, on your laptop, on your desktop. You can tell friends about it. You can test it out with folks. Try it out yourself just if you're curious to see. And then hopefully help and feedback, provide feedback. And uh, again, that's going to bring you to this simple Google form, filling it out, helping me out some uh, information about who tested it, and then also just about what you liked, what you didn't, what you got stuck on. So that is it. Uh, I hope you'll check out learntoreadcode.com. Try out Safe Game Trainer, or Safe Code Trainer, and uh, hope you enjoy it. Hope you find it helpful for somebody in your life. Uh, hoping it builds a more of a bridge for more people out there to be able to read code. Kind of foundationally, right? I was running into this issue where realizing that for so many things, for for like writing, right, we can read well ahead of the reading level that we can write at, right? We can read pretty decent fiction well before we can write anywhere near that level of fiction and the same thing's true for we can appreciate a drawing before we can draw it but for code often we kind of overlap the two where we don't do a lot of practice at how to the process of reading it separate from synthesizing it and this is kind of a very pure way to kind of get over the weirdness that is line by line jumping skipping conditional relating variables to each other those kind of things it's just focus on those very core fundamentals and obviously because it is basically an educational game with a clear short there's only 100 stages we could beat pretty quick if you're proficient programmer it's not really meant to be like an addictive loop to do forever the goal is to do this to get some proficiency some foundation some comfort of like yeah i'm actually pretty good at this this is kind of makes sense i don't feel as you know strange about this anymore and then to take that immediately right and then jump into doing youtube tutorials for coding finding example codes out there recognizing that uh you know with this under your belt you've got a good foundation to build on and obviously this doesn't cover all programming concepts just a foundation but the hope is it's going to help more people out there get started in writing some programs That's it for now. Thanks for being here. Thanks for helping out. Thanks for checking it out. LearnToReadCode.com. Available now. Bye for now.